Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Abhinav. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the problem A, B, C of educational code forces from 1 to 3. So A and, A and B was uh, easy questions uh, and uh, C was also, you can say, uh, uh, not that easy. It's a medium type question, but uh, yeah, logic was very good. And the one who gets that logic will be able to solve it very easily because implementation was quite easy but thinking of that logic was dif difficult because uh, I was able to solve the problem A and B both in within 10 minutes but for C uh, I have solved it I think at 150 means I took about uh, 90 to 100 minutes to solve the problem C because I was not getting the exact logic uh, how to solve it but uh, all about if we talk about the difficulty of the contest the A and B were very easy C was a medium type question. D was also a good question. As you see, the submissions are like uh, some 800 submissions. So D was also a nice problem. Uh, I didn't read uh, or attempted the E and F, so I can't tell about that. But yeah, the contest was overall was uh, logical. It was based on your thinking and observations. So one who is able to uh, think all the all the problems in a particular time in a means easily. Basically, luck is ka acha hoga, uske jaldi mind ma jati hai saari logic, kyunki aaj sab logical tha, there was not any DP or not any other thing, in the, at least in the first four problems, so that is why, I hope that uh, aapka contest acha hoga, so we will move towards the problem, so first of all we will discuss the problem first, which is uh, doors and keys, okay, sorry, yeah, so which is doors and keys, so we will discuss the Problem. So this is, was a very easy problem. So I don't think that anyone will have any difficulty in this. Yeah, maybe. Sometimes, what happens is that logic doesn't stack. So basically, there are some three locks, some three doors, capital R, capital G, and capital B, and the particular keys, cap, uh, small r, small g, and small b. Okay. So you are given six characters. So basically, you are given with a string of six characters. Means the sequence in which you will get a particular thing. Maybe you can get a door or you can get a key obviously obvious when you have to continue you have to move forward you have to unlock the door which is in your path and to unlock that door you have you should have that key a key corresponding to a door for example if you are at door r so you you should have the key small r if you are at uh, door g then you should have key small g so basically we have to just check that if small r is before small uh, capital R, small g is before capital G and small b is before capital, uh, capital B. And in that case, it is yes. And in all other cases, the answer is no. That was a clear and simple uh, logic of the problem. So you can use uh, find method also to find the index of small r, capital R and b and g. You can also use the other method. So what I have done, if I talk about my method, what I have done, I have uh, just uh, used a map because uh, I mostly I use map in, in problem. So what I have done, I have used map and in which I have first told that if any one of the keys I have, I have implemented the map value of that key means I have already got that key. And when I am, uh, I am in the front of that door R or door B or door G, so we should have already taken that uh, particular key so if we have not taken it then answer is no if we have taken it then obviously the answer is yes that was uh, i think uh, implementation is quite good maybe you have some uh, more interesting implementation you, you can also comment it down in the comment box that what have you done to uh, solve this question many of people have uh, solved it using a find function and using the uh, yes, the find function or they have just uh, iterated through the, because the line length is just six, they have iterated through, through the uh, string many number of times to find the index of each number. So that is uh, basically, but yeah, I think that this is a good uh, implementation, optimal implementation, okay. So now if we move towards the problem B, it is anti-Fibonacci permutation. So this was uh, also a very nice problem. So according to this problem, what uh, there should be a 
uh, you have to basically find n such permutations okay which is anti fibonacci anti fibonacci means in that permutation there should be no such index in which the that fibonacci property is holding means the uh, the a particular number should not be equal to the sum of the last two numbers okay so that is what you have to find so if we uh, so it also has some 12000 submission to the problem was very easy accordingly so if we see the uh, implementation but what i have done so let's move towards the whiteboard so if we write here for example uh, n is 5 for example that n is 5 so we can write 1 2 3 4 5 this is the one possible permutation but but in this permutation what there is happening is that uh, if we take this particular this is fibonacci okay this is not possible but this case is possible this was easily understandable this was easily observable that uh, if we write a descending array so every element is less than its preceding element so it's so it cannot be equal to the sum of the last two elements because it is less than that here they are greater than it is possible here it is less than this 3 is less than this 4 and this 5 so it can't be equal to the sum of this 4 and 5 same for all the indexes so this is the first possible in the other what can we do in the first we can swipe this these values means it will be 4 5 3 2 1 so again because this 4 and 5 both are greater than this 3 this can't be possible that the sum of 4 and 5 is equal to 3 or in any other case also in the other what can we do now we can swipe these two values answer will be 5 3 4 2 1 2 then we can swipe these two values the answer will be 5 4 2 3 1 2 so this is what i think of and in the last what we can do we can swipe these two values so the answer will be 5 4 3 1 2 this is what i think of uh, i observe so maybe you are you have a better or a different approach so if you have a better different approach you can comment it down in the comment section so that i can get to know okay comment so this is what i have done so let move towards the implementation also that how i have implemented this so for the implementation uh this was a brute force solution constructive algorithms i have just first taken a vector in its ascending order stored it okay now what i have done is that i have simply swapped for index 0,1 then for 1,2 then for 2,3 i have just swapped the values and then stored in that particular vector then i have outputted the array this is a simple and quite solution for this particular problem i hope you get it if you have any doubt you can join a telegram or you can comment down to ask your doubt okay now let's move towards the problem c what i have done here so in problem c it was also you can say uh, yeah i took time means uh, i take approx like uh, i have already told 75 to 90 minutes to solve this problem okay more than uh, i think 80 minutes to solve this problem but the yeah, logic of this problem was uh, quite good okay so what uh, there is given that we are given with the array and you have to find the there was this is a very common problem that you have to find the maximum sum of continuous array this is a very common problem You will easily get it in a geeks or geeks or some other. But the twist is that you can add a particular value x k number of times, and the value of k will and you have to output the answer for all the value of k from zero to n. So, पहले आप कहीं पर भी एक एन ए नहीं ऐड करेंगे किसी भी इंडेक्स पे, फिर आप एक इंडेक्स पे के ऐड कर सकते हैं, फिर आप ए ऐड कर सकते हैं, फिर आप किसी दो इंडेक्स पे एक ए ऐड कर सकते हैं, ऐसे करते करते 
for each value of k what should be the what will be the maximum sum of our contiguous sum value that was the problem okay so if we uh, talk about the logic of the problem okay if we talk about the logic of the problem so let's move towards the white board to discuss the logic so what uh, i have done is what i have uh, think of is uh, let's take uh, our array for example we have a array of size 6 so we have a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 okay so first of all uh, let's forget that the number x that we have a number x or a number k just think of if someone has asked us okay because what we have do, do is that uh, for example each time for k is equal to 0 may we are we are taking this particular sub array for k is equal to 1 maybe we are taking this number of sub array for k is equal to 2 maybe we are taking this sub array maybe okay and for k is equal to 1 we are taking for example for k is equal we are taking this this particular sub array so what we are doing we are adding we are also adding k into x in the sum of this sub array because we can use uh, x k number of times means we are adding x for if we are taking this when k is equal to 2 then we are adding 2 into x in this the sum of this array but there is a common thing the common thing is that Whatever will be the value of x, k, sorry, k will differ from zero to n. For every value of k, whatever is the value of k, we are taking the size of this. If this is the size of the sub array, the size of sub array is always equal to zero. Now get it. I mean, it is between zero to n. Yeah, so you are pure array. Le rahe honge ek baar mein. या तो आप कुछ नहीं ले रहे होंगे बिकॉज एम पी भी एक्सेप्टेबल है या फिर आप दो साइज की ले रहे होंगे या तीन साइज की ले रहे होंगे या चार साइज की ले रहे होंगे समझ आ रही है फॉर एग्जांपल कि जब k की वैल्यू जीरो थी तो हम लोगों ने एक तीन साइज के ले ली थी अब ऑब्वियस सी बात है वही तीन साइज के ले लेंगे जो कि बिल्कुल मैक्सिमम समझ होगी फॉर एग्जाम्पल फिर इज दिस वॉच पॉच फॉर एग्जाम्पल we have we are taking for uh, zero we are calculating we are for example if we are calculating it for k is equal to 2 okay so now what we will do we will check for every uh, uh, size of the array for example first of all we will check for that we are not taking any sub array means we are taking just a empty sub array so the answer will be zero in this case now let's say we are taking a sub array of length 1 l is equal to 1 length 1 So for length one, we will calculate that among all the sub arrays of length one, which has the maximum sum. So we will consider this particular, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. Then the one with the maximum sum will be taken here. For example, sum is sum, and we will add two into x here. Two into x, or we can say not two into because the sum is because the length of this array is one. So we can only Uh, add this value of x in the one element so we will basically take not 2 into 1 we will take more precisely minimum of length comma k into x matlab agar bhai agar hum log sirf ek length ki sab array le rahe hain to hum ek baar hi dono x ko add kar payenge agar maal teen length ke le rahe hote तो फिर भाई दो बारी कर के की वैल्यू दो है तो मिनिमम ऑफ एल कॉमा के इन टू है अब फॉर एग्जांपल वी आर टेकिंग अ सबेरे ऑफ लेंथ टू इन दैट केस वी विल फाइंड दैट व्हिच सबेरे हैज द मैक्सिमम सम एंड व्हिच सबेरे ऑफ लेंथ टू वी विल डिस्कस दिस वन वी विल डिस्कस दिस वन वी विल टेक दिस वन वी विल टेक दिस वन वी विल टेक दिस वन एंड देन व्हाटएवर इज द मैक्सिमम सम वी हैव गॉट वी विल ऐड अगेन दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेटमेंट मींस द मिनिमम ऑफ L comma k plus x. Why? Because again, if we are taking a array of two, then we can add x two times because k is two. So we can add x plus here 
and plus is in this also. So basically, we have to find that for particular length of survey, what is the maximum sum we can get? कि जब जब हम लोग एक एक लेंथ की सवेरे लें तब सबसे ज्यादा सम क्या सकता है जब दो लेंथ के सबसे ज्यादा सम क्या सकता है और फिर हम लोग फॉर एंड देन फॉर ईच वैल्यू ऑफ के फॉर ईच वैल्यू ऑफ के फ्रॉम जीरो टू एन विल चेक फॉर दैट फॉर ईच वैल्यू ऑफ के फ्रॉम जीरो टू विल चेक फॉर दैट इफ वी आर टेकिंग सवेरी ऑफ जीरो ऑफ लेंथ वन एंड टू एंड थ्री एंड देन वेन वी आर एडिंग द मिनिमम ऑफ लेंथ कॉमा एल इन दैट इन टू एक्स इन दैट What is the maximum possible? basically तो सबसे ज्यादा हमको क्या मिल रहा है सबसे अच्छा क्या मिल रहा है उसमें हम लोग एक बार एक्स एड कर देंगे फिर दो दो लेंथ की ले लेंगे दो दो तब हमें सबसे अच्छा सम क्या मिल रहा है उसमें हम लोग किसी एक इंडेक्स में एक्स एड कर देंगे के वन फिर तीन तीन की ले लेंगे उसमें किसी एक में ऐड कर देंगे चार चार की ले लेंगे ऐसे करते हैं चार चार की ले लेंगे फिर पांच की ले लेंगे फिर छह की ले लेंगे ठीक है के हम लोग एक बार एड करें तो कितना कहाँ पे मैक्सिम मैक्सिम आउट कर देंगे फाइन लेट्स मूव टू दोल्ड पार्ट सो दैट यू विल एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड इट मोर क्लियरली वॉट आई हैव डन so it was also implemented with dp but yeah i have not uh, applied yeah you can say i have applied dp uh it was partial dp you can say but yeah it was not dp actually i have used uh, yeah so for that particular thing that uh, that for that particular thing jo main nikalna tha that uh, for uh, uh, this particular means uh, what is the maximum sum For a array of length two, what is the maximum sum for an array of length three? For that, I have used the prefix array method. So what I have done is prefix sum array. Okay. So what I have done is that uh, I have simply first find the prefix sum array p. Now uh, for each value of i means for each value of means when the uh, when length of the subarray is one, when the length of the subarray is two, I find the maximum possible sum. Then For each value of k from zero to n, I have checked that again the same state. Minimum of l comma j. This is the size or the length of the particular subarray which we are taking and j. Is तरीके से if you have any doubt, so this is uh, what I have done. So if you have any doubt, you can comment down. You can ask me or you can join our Telegram. You can also. subscribe to this channel for complete programming content you can follow or connect with me on linkedin you can join our telegram and you can also follow me on uh, instagram thank you for the video i hope you like it thank you.